Uh, yep, Kyle Weiberg. I work directly for Motorola, so I uh, basically just know this product pretty well. Um, you guys are welcome to ask questions as we go, and I'm just going to start real simple, just how like uh, we normally arrive at work, uh, open up your desktop, and where you go from there, right? Like say, for instance, you saw something in the parking lot, and uh, you wanted to go check it out. So first, uh, just our login page. Uh, we'll start with some general navigation. Um, you know, once you log in, it's going to open a view for you, so you might get some cameras. And on the left, you're going to get your camera tree. So these are all the cameras that we're going to have available, uh, whether there are cameras that are local, and this is probably just going to pertain to your, just your school. And so to populate another camera, uh, it's really pretty easy. We might want to pick one out from a, uh, one of these folders here, and um, all I have to do is just double click on that camera. It's going to pop right in. If I wanted to close this one, I can just X that out. If I wanted to uh, drag in another camera, I can just double click on that. I can also drag and drop uh, and bring in another camera. And the important thing here to, there's basically three ways to do just about anything in a visual. So if I tell you one way and somebody shows you like, oh, I found this other shortcut, it's there. So uh, just because I didn't cover it the first time doesn't mean that uh, there's not another way to do it. So essentially, once we get those cameras brought in, we can uh, say we don't like this view. We want to actually you know, have like 10 different cameras. We want to be able to see everything available. We could go to say something like the, uh, button up here that allows us to change our layout. We're going to click on that and then I could just drag over the entire site and it's going to populate all the cameras for me. Um, these are the cameras that are coming in from Allen, Texas. So it just take, it does take a, a second here to, to populate. But, um, essentially it's going to give me all of those views right away uh, to how many of your cameras I have. So if I have 30 cameras, I might want to choose 36. If I want to choose, uh, you know, 20, I can do that. If I wanted to go ahead and adjust my view, I can go back to uh, edit layouts here and I can do a, a customized layout. So let's start with four divisions and uh, let's edit that. And uh, we can instantly just take this here and make a couple different scenes, right? We can make it two divisions now. So I can basically take that one camera and uh, modify that view. I can even say zoom in on one side and then take that same camera and then zoom in down here. And then I, if I wanna save this view, I can basically just go to the floppy disk icon up here, click on update save view or save as new view. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, uh, call this the parking lot. Because what I'm trying to do is make it easy so that uh, tomorrow when I come back to work, uh, I can just pull over the cameras I want and uh, have everything set up the way I like it. So if I do that, and then I open another tab here. And so just like a Google browser, actually these are all embedded Google browsers. Um, I can you know, just open another tab and uh, pull in some more cameras. If I wanted to go back to that same saved view here, uh, what do we call that one, parking lot or something, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't see it there, let me. It's right there. Is it? They call the parking lot. So oh, it's well there we go. <laughs> Perfect, so it saved it just the way that I, I left it. So I can change that at any time. I can go and update that, uh, you know, change it however I need to, adapt it. And then I'm gonna build a couple more views here. Uh, roll this back here. If I need to, say, search a certain camera, I can type in a name. Uh, it's gonna start you know, pulling up the things that are most relevant. So if I wanted to do, uh, say, like an intercom or something, uh, I can pull that over. Uh, and I can also bring this one. <laughs> right. So I do have an intercom over here in, uh, next to the pink cup, and uh, we'll see how that works in just a second. Yeah. <laughs> Essentially, uh, you know, if you use the search bar, uh, it's going to make things a little bit faster for you if, you're, if you have a lot of stuff in your camera tree. Some of the other stuff that I have in my camera tree are, you know, um, maps. Uh, I have instructions. I have other things that I can bring over. I can actually put in a website uh, as well. So I could actually pull in like time or the, the weather. So these are all in Google embedded browsers. So if I wanted to change this to, uh, uh, we'll call it google.com. And then you can basically have a, a web browser built right in here, right? So you don't have to leave your, your screen. 
If you have multiple browsers, uh, what I find to be really cool is if you hold down Control N, you get a new window, right? So now I can have two windows right next to each other. If I hold down the window key and the arrow, I can put them right next to each other. So I can have multiple different um, uh, camera views uh, available on two different sides of my screen so that I, I can interact with this one. Meanwhile, I'm doing something over here with this one. Uh, makes it really pretty easy to have multiple different cameras and, and setups available if I have two windows open. So I'm gonna close this one down. Uh, we'll expand this guy back. And let's talk about focus of attention real quick. This is a great screen to have up and just you know, let the smart cameras bring you the, sm uh, the smart information because the, the cameras are continuously thinking about what's going on in the scene. So they're collecting metadata, they're understanding like the, you know, how people normally move under that camera. So if there's all of a sudden 20 people in the back of a room, the camera might think that's unusual. It's gonna to wanna to tell you about it. One of the easy ways to get that information is through this focus of attention interface. So as an operator, I have a really easy idea about what my system looks like. This camera uh, you know, setup, these little hexagons, are gonna represent the cameras and um, you know, they're gonna basically replicate the camera tree. So you might have something that says all exterior cameras, interior cameras, however you guys have it set up for you. But just hovering over a hexagon is gonna be that, that view from that camera. And so if it's gray, there's nothing going on. If there's blue, there's motion. So you might wanna look in there, hover over it if you needed to. Uh, if, there's, if it's clear or black, it basically means the camera's down. You should probably uh, tell Jeff to take a look at it. But on the left side here, we're gonna have some events start rolling in, and these can start to uncover some anomaly events, things like um, somebody going too fast in the parking lot or something like that. Uh, and then in order to you know, investigate that, we can just click on that video and click replay, and you're gonna see a little yellow box around some of these where um, you know, it pulls in here and it thinks this, this is what's of interest. So you know, it's gonna draw your attention there. So it's trying to keep a human in the loop so that you can easily make this determination. Is this something I need to pay attention to or can I just let this one go? So here, this one's not much of a big deal. It's just somebody's car parked. Well, we're just gonna keep moving on with our day. But say for instance, it was this one here and we replay this and uh, it turns into something we need to investigate. Now we can uh, do a couple different things. There's a couple tabs up here in the top. You guys see these where there's a little person? You can actually click on this and collaborate with another user on the system. So we could say, hey, um, uh, Mr. Security, is this the person we're looking for in this, in this uh, white pickup truck? And you could zoom in on this and uh, you know, investigate a little bit. You could say, well, that's the guy. I, can, uh, I wanna investigate this a little bit further. This next button over basically allows us to open in a new tab. So once I have this tab open, this is now recorded video, and I can tell because of the timeline down here at the bottom. All the red marks are recorded video. And I can uh, just wheel in with my mouse, make that timeline short, uh, more narrow, or I can expand it and just zoom in. And uh, Visualon is super easy to use when you guys uh, get a chance here. Just scroll in and notice how easy it is to, to zoom in and pan. Uh, just using your mouse. There's a, another couple tools up here. Uh, these guys are like our cursor tools uh, where we have a, a, um, a magnifying glass. We can just take and draw a box on there and it's gonna zoom into just that area. Uh, same thing for reverse. So if I zoom out, it's gonna take, take me back there. The hand is the pan tool. So I can basically pan around this image and understand uh, where I'm going with this. I can basically do a digital pan tilt zoom uh, with the hand tool. I like the cursor tool best because if I just, uh, you know, drag and drop, if I, you know, hold it over uh, something, I can just zoom in. Uh, and then I can still use that right click to pan around my image. So it makes it pretty easy to, to navigate around an image and then understand what's underneath that camera. If I wanted to you know, uh, scroll up and down the timeline, I can do that. I can basically you know, go real fast, forward, up and down. I can click play here. And then I can also uh, zoom in uh, to the timeline using a couple different 
things around the time box area here. I can basically go from uh, 1 to uh, 8x, uh, so it can basically play uh, fast forward in real time. Uh, I can also uh, make my timeline zoom in and down using this slider here as well, so if I need to go back out months, I can do that. And, um, you know, basically just get, get around my timeline really pretty quickly. Here to make this slow down, I'm just clicking in reverse back to 1x, and then I can hit uh, pause, I can hit play. It really gives me very granular adjustment to get in there and understand what's going on in my scene. Uh, now that I have multiple views open, I'm gonna build a couple more here and uh, get things rolling for the day. Uh, we're gonna pull in uh, this camera here, and hold down control and duplicate that, that stream. Uh, let's pull in another camera. these guys. So the idea here is uh, to basically build a couple views and I can basically you know, have these rotate around. Uh, I can basically uh, make it really pretty easy to understand what needs or you know what's happening on the outside of my school. So if I click this button up here, this is to cycle my views. And so every two or three seconds, however long you have that delay, I uh, can basically cycle through. So I can go to full screen here as well, and uh, it's gonna take away those uh, borders so that it's gonna make it you know, a nice clean screen. I'm gonna be able to get a, a generalized view about what's going on. Some people find this helpful, uh, a lot of people don't, but it's really up to you. Uh, but that feature is there, it's pretty easy to access. If I need to uh, tune that down from full screen, just you know, going in reverse here, pretty simple. Uh, and then this bar over here is gonna let me expand my tree. And basically I'm just clicking on this here. You guys can see where the, uh, the arrows go wide. Basically allows me to uh, you know, expand my camera tree or contract it. And then just double clicking on it, basically expands it or contracts it. Um, let's uh, turn the cycle off. And then you guys, I'm gonna basically just double click on this one here, brings this one to my full screen here. Uh, that way I can have you know, instant uh, situational awareness on this entire scene. And then if, uh, you know, this is a live view, and the way I can tell it's a live view is that there's no recorded timeline on the bottom. If I just click on recorded, it gives me back that timeline. Now I can zoom in, uh, say if I needed to find something a couple days ago, I can go back and and zoom up and down that timeline. If I switch back to live video, I can also <laughs> click right in the square here with my right click and have access to another menu. So I can go back to live or record it right here. Uh, I can go to replay 30 seconds. And uh, another one that I have available as an administrator's device setup, this might not be available for everybody. <coughs> but if you notice a, a camera out of focus or something, definitely wanna make sure that you uh, tell your administrators that you know, there's something that needs to be taken care of. Let's see. Um, let's go over the hamburger menu. So this uh, hamburger, they, this is a Microsoft term actually. Uh, so if you click on the hamburger, it opens this side menu for me. And I basically have access to all kinds of different things now. I have to access to all these different searches, whether it's a, you know, appearance search, events, motion, uh, thumbnails, alarms, bookmarks. Um, so let's talk about real quick about, we, we found somebody going through the parking lot too fast. We found that video. Uh, what do we do next, right? We found that car. So maybe it's this guy right here. Uh, one thing I can do is just zoom in on this car and I can click the camera icon and that snapshot that image. So I can take this now, it opened another tab for me. Uh, this is gonna populate here in a second. Um, but it gives me this picture that I can export. This basically allows me to save it to my desktop. Now I can email it, text it to somebody. Uh, I can get it out there on the, on the, um, on the, on the uh, airwaves for people to take care of. The next thing I can do is take this video here and I can bookmark it. So if we're gonna go to recorded video here, and um,
come down here to the timeline. Just zooming in on the timeline here, and then I can click down here and add bookmark. So what I'm doing now is just taking, uh, you know, where I found this car, how it got here, just this little short video clip, and I can save this as a bookmark. What this does is basically allows me to communicate to somebody else that here's this piece of saved video, so I can uh, name this like a black car or something. Um, I can uh, add in a description like was driving too fast, thought it was Tommy, not sure. And then I can protect this bookmark. If I protect it, it basically means that it's, this bookmark is not gonna get overwritten. So this little piece of video that we see on the timeline, uh, it's gonna stay here until we remove that protect bookmark data. So the you know, procedure typically, <coughs> if you see something, you wanna say something, right? You wanna make sure that those people have that instant opportunity to respond to an event. Uh, and forensically speaking, we wanna make sure that that evidence is saved so that if we need to come back to it later, it's easy to find, easy to communicate. About. So if I take this bookmark and I say okay, and now I go back over here to my hamburger menu and I go down to bookmarks. Now I can search in here, I can put in uh, that black car and there's that bookmark. So now I can export this bookmark in total and this could be for more than just one camera, uh, but essentially it gives me a great way to have this video data that I can make into evidence. When I export that or I tell my um, you know, security investigators how to do this, uh, you know that this is available here, um, you know, please take it off the server, then they can basically make sure that that piece of video is you know, what you wanted to include in that investigation. So making a bookmark is important, uh, but it's also important to communicate because you don't wanna fill up your server with a bunch of bookmarks that don't mean anything, right? You wanna make sure that it's, if it's um, you know, an actual thing that you need to make into evidence, you communicate about that. So I can see that this bookmark is locked right now, I can unlock this right here, and then we can uh, also delete that bookmark by just um, click, right-clicking and clicking delete on this bookmark. Any questions so far? I'm going kind of fast, so don't feel free to slow me down. I have a question about yes. the saving. Like, our old system only saved video for about two weeks, and so what is the length that we're going to have saved? Yep. Um, and once we bookmark something, I'm pretty sure the standard is 30 days now. Um, and then once you have that bookmark on there, the bookmark will be there if it's unprotected. Uh, if it's not protected, it'll get overwritten. Right, so if you protect the bookmark, it stays. Regardless of the 30 days? Yes. Okay, thank you. But too many bookmarks will make it 22 days real quick. <laughs> Excellent. Um, oh, let's see. We were talking about focus of attention. We did that part. Um, you know, this is a super easy software to learn, and honestly, it just takes some practice. But if you like to leave class today and you forgot how to, you know, make a bookmark, you can go back to the hamburger menu, come down to the help menu down here, and this is going to take us to the user guide. The user guide is super simple. We're just going to type in bookmark and uh, click return, and it's gonna bring up uh, how to if, you know, work with a bookmark, how to add a bookmark, how to delete that bookmark, and managing bookmarks. So even though you might go through this whole class today and understand you know, just how to you know, start moving around through the software, it's easy to, if you lose track of uh, that topic to get, to get back to that. Um, so I'll close that out, we'll close this guy, this one, this one, this one. And uh, typically, you know, you can have a, a bunch of tabs open. It's not going to hurt the performance. It's basically you're just going to start streaming that page that you're asking for. Uh, but typically, like six or eight bookmarks is usually enough uh, to get the things done you, that you would need to on a daily basis. Let's uh, open another tab here. Really quick while Kyle's, yeah. you know, opening up the, the next tab and you know, the next part. So you guys know board policy for us is 21 days. So 21 days, um, 21 days of, of stuff that we'll, we'll go back on. These bookmarks, obviously, is what he's saying. We'll, we'll you know, 
kind of not supersede that, but we'll we'll say past that 30 day or 21 day period. So if there are things that we need to investigate or things that we need to look at, and you bookmark that, we won't lose it after that 21 days like we would other footage. So understanding that's important. Just uh, again for those, things, hopefully we've got things done inside of 21 days, you know. But the reality of it is, is sometimes things take longer, and so when they do, having that bookmark will help us retain that stuff that we need. I don't have a live fisheye, so I'm going to pull up some recorded fisheye footage so we can understand, you know, just how to navigate a fisheye, because I think that's important as well. Uh, we'll as Kyle is going to pull that up, I'll tell you. So right now we're in process. All elementary schools will have a vigilant cameras um, inside, uh, as well as the exterior cameras that we've had replaced. Uh, secondary schools, so all of our middle and high schools are being replaced but because we had working cameras there Craig's focus was getting something on the inside uh, to our elementaries that didn't have anything so we're still going to be dealing with some of those Samsung cameras um, at the middle and high schools for now so some of this uh, not not the same um, just based on the, the vigilant camera being able to, that that search and the stuff that we'll get into a little later uh, but these fish eyes are a pretty popular camera because of what Kyle's going to show you that they can do we've selected these um, you know, to cover a lot of hallways and different different views, different areas within the schools. So, yeah, Josh, go ahead. So are we gonna need a different software to access? No, the, okay. no, we've imported everything over. So all of those cameras uh, should be working on a vigilant today. Cool, so you guys- I wouldn't do that to you, man. <laughs> so this is a, sometimes called a panoramic camera, but uh, colloquially it's a fisheye camera, right? Because it looks like you're looking through a fish's eye. Um, for a vigilant, these fisheye cameras are pretty fantastic because it basically records in all directions, 360 degree view, no blind spots under the camera. Um, but, you know, it doesn't always have to look like this. Uh, if I just zoom in here, it starts de-warping that image. So it makes it straight, so I can look at it like a normal human and understand what's going on here. So I'm going to start playing this, and then I'm using my pan tool, I'm just uh, using, I have the cursor, and then I'm right clicking here, and I'm just dragging this around. So now I can understand what this whole scene is about, and I can also even see all the way through the door over there, uh, down into the parking lot across the street. So these cameras are pretty dynamic. There's a lot you can do with these guys, and um, you know, you can have it set up so that it basically looks like four different cameras. So I'm going to basically go to four divisions. I'm going to just hold down the control button. I'm going to basically drag this camera, the same stream, into multiple different views. And then I'm going to use my magnifying tool to locate this side, uh, this side here, and then this side here. So even upside down, that camera's going to right itself and point me in the right direction. Clicking back to my cursor tool, just zooming in a little bit, uh, zoom in a little bit more here get this set up the way I like it, and maybe I want to see this door. This gives me a, a great way to save this camera that's doing just, you know, the work of one camera, but it's actually doing like the work of four or eight cameras. Because now I can save this view, and the next time I open this camera, it's going to pop open just like this. Uh, but meanwhile, say for instance, you need to follow somebody in here, just double clicking on this one, brings it right to the open to that view, now I can follow somebody all the way through my scene. And you guys can see how if I move it, it basically like the, it looks a little bit out of um, focus on one side and then if it snaps into focus, it's designed to do that. Because this is a 12 megapixel camera, it's actually a pretty big file size for this. But in order to limit the bandwidth and make it much easier to use, we use a, a technology that basically breaks it into a low res and a high res stream. So when you ask for the detail, it's gonna be there. So if it looks a little fuzzy on your screen, it, that's okay. It's normally supposed to be like that. Just zoom in a little bit, brings it right into detail. Yes? If you use the fisheye camera and you make several views, can you make that cycle on one camera? You sure can, yeah. Where's the cycle button? Uh, so I'm using the player because this is oh. recorded video here. Sorry. But in the live view, um, that same thing here we would, uh, open that camera right here. Thank you. Absolutely. Great. And
And so I mentioned that there was uh, three other ways. We basically can search here. Uh, we can also go to recorded video, click on this guy, and then search here as well, because unlocks all those search items as well. And so, uh, how are we doing so far, Jeff? Good. Uh, I have a quick question. Yes. So since our cameras aren't updated yet, are we still able to do that with our fish eyes that we already have in, in place? Yeah, probably a lot of the fish eyes that you guys, yeah, absolutely. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That upgrades <laughs> a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> and we have replaced at Windsor Middle School specifically, there was a couple of multi-view cameras. Mm -hmm. So what happened was when we imported from the old system. They were a Samsung, it's just a Hanwha was the camera that we moved. Some of those didn't play nice with the original and they didn't come over like we wanted them to and so we ended up replacing. Uh, so a lot of your exterior cameras uh, are going to be the Vigilon, and so what, what Kyle's showing is, is going to be applicable. When we get into some of the inside cameras, you'll have some of these that are Vigilon cameras now as well. Um, the, the rest of them, again, we're going we're gonna to get you guys replaced. We've got a phase two uh, end date of the, the end of this calendar year. So ideally, we're going to take all of the cameras that are Samsung, Hanwha, and get them out. They'll be replaced with the Vigilon camera and all of this stuff, you know, the the event tracking and things that Kyle's going to get into here will be available to you. Um, yeah, but some of the cameras that you've got now, Megan, will be. Excellent. Well, let's, uh, intercom's going to be pretty useful at a lot of yeah. the schools, right? So let's go ahead and, would you mind pressing the intercom there for me? The, the button that's lighted, and basically once she presses that, it's going to start ringing into the client here. So you're going to get this button that pops up here. I can double click on this. This opens the screen. Now I can see what's going on. Now I can answer that call. And through my computer, she's going to be able to hear me at the front door. And then I can unlock that door. I can turn that down. I can turn the, um, the speaker on. And then I can click on this little button up here. And now it's going to click unlock. To end that call, I just X out of it, closes it for me as well. Um, so I'm going to pull up the intercom just to have it on the desktop here. And we'll just understand some of the icons available here. So this red dot basically means that the, this is recording. There's a couple others. There's uh, white, which is basically standby, and then blue, which is recording on motion. Red is that it's actively recording. So if I toggle this off, and this is probably going to be turned off for a lot of you guys, it's just going to automatically record on motion. But here, this digital input button, if I click on this, it's going to set me up so that I can just click on OK, and it's going to unlock the door for me. So that's probably going to tell the access control that, hey, it's OK to open the, the door, and it's going to record that there. So once I click OK, it's going to unlock that door for me. If I just wanted to, you know, say somebody walks up and I notice that they're there and I just want to listen in, I can do that as well just by clicking on the speaker. <laughs> yeah. I can also click on the microphone to start talking to them uh, before they start you know, pressing on the button. So it is interactive before they press that and after they press it as well. Do they hear it when I turn it on to listen? Uh, will they hear you? No, if, they hear me listening. Like, you know, oh. like it makes a beat. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's, okay. it's listening now. It's listening. Okay. So, no, it, 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 the intercom is not going to give you a, uh, a beat before it starts. Um, <laughs> uh, give, or start, you know, giving you that audio to the communication. Yeah. I just want to hear what they say about me when yeah. they walk out. <laughs> <laughs> But this is probably a good time to remind everybody to be kind and be respectful because the software records every single click. So be, just to be transparent, if you do something that you're not supposed to, it's recorded. <laughs> um, let's see. That will tie in, so those video intercoms Craig and I have talked about, um, but so you guys know, the idea will be that those will be at all schools. Um, we're hoping to have them installed in those elementary schools before the first day. So when I think about views that you guys have had common in the past, you know, that, that front door where you can see people that are walking up and kind of monitor, I imagine you would probably populate one of those tiles with this intercom so you can see. 
Uh, the difference between those A phones that we've used before when somebody comes up and puts a hand over or you know does that, you have the ability, because this is actually a camera, and so that's recording, and so if you had somebody do that, you could theoretically rewind it a little bit and see who had walked up or who was doing what yeah. before allowing access. So it's a little bit different, a little more advanced than, than that A phone that we've had in some locations. So, but then for our elementary schools, again, this will be a new thing for you to be able to buzz people in. Awesome. Question for you, Jeff. Are we going to have this on the, on the innovation door as well as activity? So we've talked about different spots uh, to put it. I don't believe we've looked at the innovation doors at this point. I think we talked activity hall. Um, I know, um, you know, Dr. Dodd wants to look at something on that, um, on that entrance as well as potentially a kiosk that's there. So you've got it staffed on both sides. I really don't know what the solution will end up being, but we, we have the ability to add this as we would any camera. So if, if the Innovation Center became a, a hot topic where you guys were like, we really could use this, we can put it there. And then the, the great thing, as Kyle has explained, is that because this is browser-based, whoever's monitoring that, you can have that populated. So theoretically, multiple people can be seeing it to allow access. That was my question, just sure. because it is becoming a hot spot. Yeah. yeah. So people to park in the right spot. Yeah. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Can we expect something like this at the middle school? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I can. I'll let Craig speak on the timeline. But yes. Yeah. For so I mean, for priority of, <clears throat> I'm gonna. Well, that'd be what phase two. Yeah. We're, yeah. Priority. When we. Or whatever. Yeah. When we're as we're installing phase two, um, Elizabeth. When we get to that, we'll talk to you about what do you want to see. What do you want to see? You know, because we'll we'll hit your school and do do everything okay. to try to get all those cameras installed. And so. Um, for me, this is a it's it's a big camera. I think it's a it's a really valuable thing. So I, I'd love to have this. Especially because you know, we don't have a line of sight. Right. Yeah. 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 And, and and that's right. So so having that taken care of would be a priority. Um, so yeah, I, I would assume, you know, first of the year again for our <coughs> elementary, but shortly thereafter um, for our high schools. Can we get our door working? So no. <laughs> no. Like it's the, it's the, the big it's the big heavy all heavy stuff. That, yeah, are you talking? Sorry. Are you talking the buttons? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So those are just inputs and everything. And so, so I know we've got uh, that crew with Radio Resource that's going out, and they're they're making sure that those things are wired correctly because there was some, you know, wiring that wasn't wasn't how it should have been, and so they're trying to make that work correctly. Those buttons will work just like they, they did before the start of the year. Right. Thank you. Just a little bit of patience there, just to, as they're running around doing stuff. But we'll we'll get it done before the first of the year for sure. Tomorrow would be great for open house. <laughs> yes, so for elementary schools, so Tozer and Mountain View that have two entrances, mm -hmm. so right now our outside doors are unlocked and then we buzz them in through the second door. Mm -hmm. Is this going to, are these going to our outside doors now and they'll have to be buzzed into the outside doors and then do we still have to buzz them into the office door? Do you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yes. So. The way it, the way it is right now, the answer is yes. Okay. So these would be on the exterior. You buzz them into there with the intercom, okay. and then the way it's set up right now, you'd have to then still buzz them into, still buzz the, them office into the office. So, but the setup we're trying to get to, some of the schools have, is the transaction, you know, like ticket window, to okay. where you can make the you know scan the visitor, um, you know, print their badge and all that with them in the vestibule, not in the front office can you extend that button time where like when you push it now it almost immediately locks back can you make it a little bit longer before it automatically locks back they just adjusted ours oh they did they can mm -hmm. fix it they oh, for the ticket. to the office the door is that what you're saying not yeah. from the main door but to get into like the yeah. reception area when i push it it's lickety split fast. oh is it? they can change okay. it until so ours was set up when we came back fast. if you click it it won't you have to let it go uh -huh. Like if you yeah. hold it, it stays unlocked until oh. you let it go, then it locks. Oh, or you wall, can right? set it to where there's a no, delay. You the button under your desk that you push to let it go. Yeah. It's adjustable. Okay. Thank okay. you. Well, let's build a uh, view that we would want to probably see for most of the day, right? We're going to add an intercom. We're going to add all our exterior cameras so that we can see who's approaching the building during the day. Great. Sound like a good plan? Mm -hmm. So I have this view open, it starts with four. I want to change this and customize my view. So I actually want to make this, um, oh, we'll do 15, right? This one looks pretty good, I like that. So I'm gonna drag over some cameras, one at a time here. I'm gonna bring this guy over here. I'm gonna put my intercom up here in the corner. And this guy, this one here, that one. And then we'll, uh, 
pull this guy across. There we go. Um, let's get some weather in there. When, they, when the first time they were talking to us about these cameras, they mentioned that the intercom camera, when somebody presses the button, it'll pop up. Yeah. Is that the case still, or do I need to have? Yeah. It up so all you're the time? gonna have the you would want to have the client open, and it's gonna pop up or pop up in the client. Okay. So whether I have that screen on or not, it'll yeah. pop up. So okay. if you uh, had this screen in the background, and then you open your browser on top of it, can you press the button for us? Should get that audio notification. And then it's going to pop up here. Maybe I don't have it. Here it is. So now I can answer this right here. Okay. That's what I was questioning. Uh, so we'll bring that intercom over. Can multiple classrooms call you at one time? Yep, they can. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but this is typically on the exterior doors, though. This isn't yeah, one of the yeah. classrooms. Oh, that's right. um, but essentially, I've got this built out, now I can go back and edit this a little bit. I can edit my layout. Maybe I wanna make this one wider and uh, this one taller. There we go. Did you just click on them? Yep, just clicked on the lines, they went away, and I can basically zoom in on these, uh, understand more about you know what's going on in that site, uh, get it just the way I like it, and then if you know that's the way I, I need it for the day, I can just save that view. Uh, going back to the icon here, save as new view. And can you save those? I, I think you may have said this already, so I apologize. But can you save that as like your daily view? So it's set up this way, and I know that I can just push a button, and that's going to be how it opens up for me tomorrow and the next day. Exactly. So I'm going to click OK here, and then I'm going to just go ahead and uh, close this whole thing down. And then open a new window here. And then I just save that as exteriors. There it is. I'm just double clicking on that. It's going to populate just the way I left. Uh, Jeff, can we do thumbnail search with this group? Is that? Um, let's, yeah, let's, let's see who wants to stay and hang out. Okay. And I, got, I, think, uh, I think we can get into that for sure. OK. Um, re really quick on that video intercom, um, I want to get back to that, and then again, if we want to take a quick break and let anybody that wants to go, go, um, and then uh, you can keep going, Kyle, I think to start diving in makes the most sense. Okay. The video intercom, the idea was, as we walk around to the schools, so the exterior is where we have the intercom. So to be able to buzz there lets them into the vestibule. So essentially, the idea would be to lock the front doors. So at our elementary schools, we're really everywhere, we're secure. And then somebody would come up and they would hit that, they would be buzzed into the vestibule. Having the second buzz is, is unique. We weren't sure how to deal with that. And as we went through and talked, the idea was, you see somebody, they come up, you, you buzz them in, you're gonna have a camera in that vestibule so you can see them. What we didn't want to do is have that buzz, let them in, and then access to the school. Mm -hmm. So we, we wanted to say, okay, you see them, you've interacted with them, you've let them in. But since we don't have this, uh, this transaction window at every school today, we said, okay, we're going to still lock you out. Yeah. Because maybe they get into the vestibule and all of a sudden they don't look, you know, they, they had a coat on or something and you just don't like the looks. And so I don't want you to be vulnerable in that way. So we said, we're going to just lock that down. And so, yes, it's a buzz in, you know, that click. And then it is a buzz to let them in the office or the school. But that's that's kind of a decision that we made with that. As we go through this, I would love to hear your guys' feedback. Like, hey, we, we really don't want this. Let's do this. We'll change this and adapt this as we need to for schools. But I'm always going to defer to safety. You know, and I would rather have somebody locked there and have you have the, uh, the inconvenience, if you will, of a second click as opposed to having somebody be able to come in. So just, just so you know, kind of the train of thought that we had when we were doing this, it was that's the, the decision that we came to, and that's why. I think it always comes back to like how are we communicating it with our families. You Absolutely. Know, if we if we talk to them through the lens of hey, this is for school safety, you know, they can be inconvenienced, and yep. I think that changes some perspective, especially on most families who Agreed. maybe you feel impatient. Agreed. Most families are gonna like. Yeah, I think fine with it. I, I think so too. Yeah. So before we really start diving in and getting more investigative and everything like that, I mean, if we want to take a quick break, we can. If anybody that you know wants to get back and isn't interested in the second half, that's great. Uh, whatever we want to do, but let's uh, maybe a couple minutes try to get going about quarter till.
Trust me. It's like a three minute break. It's like a military break. Yeah. <laughs> so the next one's for more of the investigative. Like we'll go, if we'll go, some, yeah. He's just going to cause me to continue to go investigation. Not necessarily for front office staff. I wouldn't, I wouldn't think so. I, it okay. depends. I, I know every school is different as to what they allow everybody to do or what they want to do. I think you guys are good. I think this is the like. This is going to be something else that's seen. That's for investigation. You're taking four choices in the hallway. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
showing you the, the browser version right now. So that's our that's our cloud so this service. Is this is this is the cloud. Okay, so we have we have that or I thought you were I'm sorry. So we'll have uh, for those that have Macs in their buildings and everything, you'll have you'll have that uh, browser. So it's a it's a cloud service thing that you're gonna see. So most of it's available. Everything that you've talked about today is still on that, isn't it? Yeah exactly. Yeah. So being so, able to see live and recorded video yeah. uh, yeah. it's gonna be the same thing where you're just gonna drag and drop a camera right, right. over uh, and it's going to fulfill that yep. Point, yep. Yep. for you you're going to have the ability to just go right back on the timeline right here right so that'll exist regardless of your computer as we get more investigative here now you know we're talking about this being a kind of a pc client thing so you know we're looking at, at what you know having making sure that we've got at least a pc somewhere there that you can do some of what what kyle will be showing you um to be able to export that video and do some of those things that's going to be specific to the client and that client would, would would then be specific to a desktop machine as opposed to a mac so just so you guys are aware it's a conversation i'm having with craig for like i don't know what schools and, and maybe we can have that conversation after i don't want to take kyle's time um, but we need to make certain that everybody's got access to a PC um, at those locations. So, uh, and, you know, Nikki was here, was asking about another monitor, you know, to be able to pull this up, you know, depending on that front desk person and, and what they're doing, you know, we may need to look at a third monitor. We may need to look at, at, at a different way to do things. And so as we get into it again, it's going to be, you know, what works for your environment? What is it that you need from us? Um, and then we'll, we'll just kind of adjust, you know, not every school would be the same. Um, but you know we want to make certain that as you're monitoring these different things that we're giving you you have that ability so be thinking about your environment be thinking about things you know um, starting tomorrow afternoon I'll start visiting I'll be at every school for a couple hours you know we're not going to solve everything in a couple hours but if you can be making kind of a list of things like had like this you know or we really you know need to do this specifically maybe this by the start of the school year or this is something we can look at for the first month you know those types of things i want to make sure i get written down so we can adjust those as the as the year goes you know love to be able to do everything at once it's just it's just one of me so loading the software is that going to be something we do on our own through the self-serve I'm not is sure. I'm, I'm not really sure what the best way is to load that. Once that, uh, we haven't put that that that's, uh, that software on on that portal yet at all. So there's no way for you to do it. Okay. Um, so we'll upload that, and then we'll figure out the best way to deploy it. Evan, I don't know what that is yet today. Um, I'll talk to Stephen. You know, and as it relates to our text, I, I I would anticipate it would just be the text coming by, grabbing that uh, that client and getting it loaded for you. That would be my guess. But okay. I, I need to visit with them. I don't want to inundate them with work either because they've got enough going on. So. Yeah. Okay, so I have the three screens set up on my desk, but if I'm not there for a day, mm -hmm. would my attendance clerk still have access? Do they have logins? How do we make sure that there's still somebody at the front desk that has that list? Okay, you there we go. Awesome. There we go. Well, so so what I, what I anticipate doing, you know, again is. You know, so Elizabeth again for, for, for Windsor Middle School as the example will say hey I want I want these people to have access to these things you know there's a way for us to set up different th uh, you know different views different privileges um, you know once we get that taken care of as long as you're in that group you'll have access with your same network log so you'll be able to get to this log in with your credentials and have access to that now what I anticipate doing you know especially when I think about upstairs we probably <coughs> will have a generic WMS sub 
as an example, like a logon. So if you do have a substitute there, they can pull that up so they can see the intercoms, so they can see the front. You know, I don't want to give them, you know, much privilege, but at the same time, we want to give them basic function. So we'll have that conversation, you know, as we go. So who, who, who's involved in that group, number one? And then, um, you know, what, what do we need to do for subs and things like that? Um, Are we able to say <coughs> what cameras certain people have access to? Oh, is it that granular? I, can we can we say like these these staff have access to these sets of cameras, but these staff have? Okay. Just programming, you're killing me right now. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, we can certainly do that in 24. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's I, what we really like. What we really think about the system is the is how granular it can be, you know, and how much we can really scale it to to what it is your needs are. So as as you identify different things for your particular location, yeah, yeah it's just a matter of figuring out how we do that and making that. And I'm learning this as well. So I've got the familiarity with the Genetech stuff. I can do that pretty quick. There are still I forgot to I didn't apply a schedule correctly, you know, for new staff orientation. I did it. I built it. Everything was great, but the doors didn't unlock because I, I missed one spot. So I'm still going to be stumbling through a little bit of this from a function side of things, at, at least to start. I, I think I'm picking it up pretty quick, but yeah, it's 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 a learning curve for everybody. Thank you. So, thanks, Scott. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. So this is the other flip side, right? So we've figured out how to use the software. Now we need to kind of think about using the software, thinking about how the cameras work, thinking about how the environment operates. Right? Because you're going to have all these different factors uh, that get built into this equation, but how do we get to the answer? Right? So the first part, I'm just going to open this window here. You guys can see these little blue bounding boxes go by, right? Those are our classified object detection analytics. And so what the camera is doing here is figuring out that this is a vehicle. Uh, it's a white pickup, gray car, red car, uh, semi-truck. It's recording all of that so it can easily search uh, from uh, general descriptions. Uh, the other thing that's happening here is that these uh, classified object detection give us the ability to set up rules so that we can action events. So essentially, if we have somebody drive over a line into the parking lot, uh, we can send that message to whoever needs to hear that, right? So we can get the right information to the right people at the right time. Uh, so through that focus of attention interface, these little doodads, these uh, windows that come up here, like this one, this one right here, uh, was an analytic event. It was um, when Jeff entered through this area, right? So uh, I had it pre-set up in the camera, and I'll show you how to do this. But basically, once he crossed into this area, it triggered this event, brought it to focus of attention. That could go to an email, it could go to a text message, and if it was important enough, it could go over the radio. So essentially, we're going to see how all these different things combine to make it so that focus of attention really does bring you that information that you need when you need it and not making you watch live video, just staring at a screen like, uh, like this one, uh, trying to figure out what's going on. Because that's, all, that's like near impossible. Mm -hmm. There's like no reason to have the screen up really. Uh, if you have the smart cameras programmed the way, the way that you want them, uh, certainly that system's gonna become automatic, bring you the information when you need it. So essentially, the other part of this is understanding what's underneath those cameras. So if you think about your environment and what happens typically, uh, say for instance, you wanna know when somebody pulls into the visitor parking lot, you can draw a, um, uh, let's pull this open here so you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, scooting that over a little bit, there we go. Drag and drop in this guy. And oh boy. did I just crash my machine? I did. Technology man. One second, please.
This is from that same camera, but we drew a box around the visitor parking. So as soon as that classified object rolled into the parking lot, we could tell the front desk about it. So that's super helpful, especially for odd hours, like in between classes in the morning when you're not expecting parents and other people to show up and all of a sudden you've got somebody in the visitor parking. It gives you a little bit of you know, a head start on that person coming up so that you can identify them uh, from that exterior view and then be ready for them when they uh, come up to the intercom. So if we have that, let's open that focus of attention again. So all I did is I went over to the, uh, the hamburger menu, opened my focus of attention. Let's go pull on that exterior view again as well. So just double clicking, fills in all my exterior cameras. And now we want to find out how this car got into the visitor parking, right? We missed it. So being human, we need to find out what happened. Uh, we missed that event. So there's a couple different things I can do here. I could go straight to recorded video and zoom in on the timeline here, uh, get to the day, here we go, I can just scroll up and down. You know, that kind of gives me an idea of when the car is there. Uh, but I need to find precisely when that car get the, got there because I want to be able to follow that person. So what I'm going to do is go to uh, this tab up here, search, and I can do a thumbnail search. And now this brings me to recorded video in a, in a search by, uh, window. And I can basically take this area of interest, this yellow box, and I can drag and drop it, place it over whatever, and I can just place it right over this car, and it's gonna search in between these two bars. So sometime between 4 a.m. and 9 a.m. to tell me when this car got here. So I'm just clicking search, and it's gonna pull up evenly spaced thumbnail images across the timeline. So you can see them here, this, this one re re responds to the one on the top. This one is gonna highlight this one down here, and so I found out that sometime between 6.57 and 7.10, this car showed up. Great, that's only like 13 minutes of video to watch, right? Like you guys can handle that, right? No problem? That's, that's like, horrible. That's horrible. <laughs> that's <laughs> Jeez. So we're just gonna double click on the car and we're gonna find out between 7.01 and 7.10. Just double clicking on the car again, narrows it down. So now between 7.09.27 and 40, that car showed up. So that's 13 seconds. I think we can handle that. I'm gonna just open this one in view. Come back here a little bit. There we go, there's the car. So I can play this and find out exactly what happened. So now I can zoom in. Just tell me to work. So that way, I, you know, instead of watching 13 minutes of video or whatever, uh, instead of scrubbing, I use thumbnail search to find this within under a minute. So, you know, this is really good for those static changes where there's graffiti on the wall, there's something in the parking lot, cars upside down, or, uh, you know, the, the doors open, whatever, gives you the ability to instantly find that uh, with really very minimal searching, just double clicking. Question on the parameters in which you're setting to focus these areas does because there's so much movement within a building or outside of exterior specific yeah. to our building. Will it can it overload the idea of what it's doing when it's setting the parameters to where those thumbnails can be a little more difficult to kind of navigate? Or do, is it yeah, so the thumbnails are just evenly spacing it between the two bars on the timeline. So just to start over here, uh, it basically is searching in between this time and this time on, so I can just drag and drop these out. If you're referring to how much motion is in the scene, right. this isn't actually searching on motion. It's just but I mean, when you're putting in the actual parameter to kind of focus on that, the AI-ish stuff. Yeah. yeah, so we start with just drawing that box around it. It's <coughs> just basically gonna take that thumbnail image from all the different frames along the timeline and then just pulls them uh, evenly spaced across the timeline. So there, it's not really calculating anything to do with the motion. Okay. Uh, it's just really whether you know there's something in that space or not. Okay. But that's that's a good point, and it leads into this next search, which is a classified object search. So in this case, we're we're probably going to uh, go look for the same car, and uh, I'll close this guy up here. Let's go back to this view uh, for exteriors. Do. 
So now we're just, instead of doing a thumbnail search, we're gonna go to recorded video, and we're doing the other one, motion search. So motion search is really good for, you know, like if a, you know, a tree fell over or a kid was running through or something like that, or a car drove through the parking lot. But if we were to do a motion search on this entire scene, there's trees blowing, there's flags flying, there's a lot of motion, right? Like that's thousands of results that you probably have to look through. So instead, we want to find the same car. I'm just basically dragging and dropping this box right over this car. And when I pull these lines, it gives me two more dots. So I can make this really super um, detailed around the shape. There we go. And now I can search in between my two timelines here. And you can see this is doing like all of my video. I really just want to do uh, the last couple hours or the last day maybe. So I'm getting this closer to where I need it to be. Today is the eighth, right? There we go. And so we're going to search for vehicles and individual objects. And I'm going to click search here. And it's searching over like six hours. And yes, analytics are not turned on on that camera. Perfect. Let's do something else with a different camera, which I know works. Let's go to the courtyard. And let's search on motion on this car, on this camera. So I'm going to do that same thing, go into recorded video, go into motion search, and say I want to know who came through uh, and uh, Maybe I'm looking for the landscapers, right? Because I know there's grass here. The landscapers got to go through the grass. So I'm going to basically take this classified object search and narrow this down to looking for August 1st. Somebody reported some damage to their car in the parking lot. They think it was a flying rock from the landscaper, from the, the mower. So we're gonna find out if it was the mower and if he went by that car. So I'm just clicking uh, here. I'm searching on August 1st between 1 a.m. and 11.25 p.m. And uh, I'm looking for a vehicle or a person. And in this area where there's probably no cars, hopefully, uh, we're gonna search for this area to find that lawnmower. So here, We've got, instead of thousands of results on motion, we've got eight results to look through. So now I can play these um, as I go here, and then I see this classified object box on this guy, right? I can zoom in, you guys can see this, it identifies it as a vehicle. So I can just click on this, it gives me the option, find before or after this. So I need to find out where this guy went after, and uh, I'm clicking on that, it's basically gonna find all the images of the lawnmowers uh, coming through my area here. So basically, now I can add these to my search. Here he is on this same camera. Here he is on a different camera, right? I'm gonna play this video here for you guys where so you guys can understand what this video analytics are doing. That blue box found that dude, you know, in this huge area of this camera, right? So we can add that to our, uh, uh, our list, we'll add this one as well, different camera, this one, this one, this one. And you can see it's pulling up motorcycles too, right? Like It's trying to bring up the most results that are going to meet this generally classified description so that we can, you know, as the human in the loop, start making decisions about how the story plays out. So I'm going to add some more of these. I'm going to star all those to my timeline. And then basically, you know, these are saving these little video clips. I can add more here. And it's basically, the more clips I pick out, the better it's teaching the AI that this is the object that I'm looking for. Uh, please add these to my list. So here he is on another one, and another one. And uh, it starts with a 15 minute time span. This is called appearance search. And so basically, it's combining that classified object detection, right? It's picked up those general descriptors, uh, so if we went over here to the hamburger menu, we went down to appearances, we can search on all these different uh, items, gender, size, uh, hair color, 
age, and that really age just refers to size. So it's either you know kids or adults. It's not saying that you're 26 or you're 52 or whatever. It's uh, saying that you know yeah. that you're three feet or six feet. Yes. Um, and then you can pick out the upper body, lower body clothing color for that person as well. You can also pick out, if it was a vehicle, same deal. Like you can pick out the size of the vehicle, the color, and then you can pick out the date range. All these general descriptors end up into appearance search so that you can basically start with this 15 minute window, find out where that person is on your property quickly, and then add that story to that investigation. So now that I've got all these little clips here, you can see that they combine into this timeline, brings me to those cameras. I can click export here. And then as an investigator, this is super helpful because this appearance search just helped me collect all these little videos and put them into one file for me so that regardless what camera they're from, it's gonna be in the same file and they're gonna play chronologically back to back to back. Oh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, say, got her. Got her. <laughs> uh, but say for instance we had to go back to this camera and we had to go put in another no, clip here. Say for instance we want to add an export for uh, just a couple awesome. seconds here. We can do that and uh, it's going to add it to my export as well. I can take this same clip and add this into my other file position it so it's going to be in that file as well right so all those little clips are available even if I need to edit one I can basically use my bookmarks down here stretch those out make that clip a little bit longer if I need it this is really pretty impactful this saves us a tremendous amount of time when you can basically build an investigation without scrubbing video right you get these clips uh, you get you can confirm the evidence that you have and then add it to a file and then export it all at once for uh, law enforcement. Does it have the ability to do facial recognition like a face? Zoom in on a kid's face and say, follow this kid through passing period from this time to this time? Yeah, we can do that. Okay. We can, but I don't know if it's turned on. Right. We'll, we'll talk. <laughs> <laughs> if we knew what they were wearing, like yeah. maybe not do facial, well, but we know like what so they're wearing. Yeah, program it. exactly. With appearance search, we can actually search on an image. So if I needed to, you know, uh, you know if say for instance, I have a student ID you know, picture that I can add here, uh, I can search on this picture <laughs> across my entire facility uh, and then, you know, understand that you know, this person's right in there, right? Like, it's not going to, the better uh, way to do it is basically to have that, find that person in a recorded video. Parent search works on recorded video, not in live video. Facial recognition works in live video. Okay. And typically, we're just going to have facial recognition on doorways, choke points, uh, those types of areas, so that you can instantly know that somebody on your watch list has just showed up. But it can do that. Yeah. And to have that conversation, Elizabeth, just so you know, it's there, there's a vigilant has got a lot of great stuff, and so we're, we're pretty excited about that. But because of the laws that exist, I. And we've not had that conversation before, Trevor. You know, Trevor has said so. Even when we talk about law enforcement, there's a way we have our SROs, and it's great. But there's a way the school needs to to relate and work with law enforcement. So those are those are certain things that we just need to make sure are, are applied to the schools. So I, the facial recognition thing, I'm really not sure where we sit with that because I don't know about privacy and things that we could actually do. The apparent search, you know, so you know what somebody's wearing. Yeah, we can do that, and I think that's going to help us with with the bulk of what we're going to do. But as we understand the law and what it is we can actually apply in a school district, we'll be able to start turning on, you know, more more of these things. So, but it's just again from our from my side of things, I'm not educated enough to know what we can and can't do. So we're going to keep some of those things turned off until we have a real good understanding. And we're learning through that as well too, as we take continuous more right. classes and learning yeah. more about FERPA and all that as well too. Because we exactly. found that out too through a lot of our classes this week. Yeah. It's it's probably good to recognize here that appearance search works on similarities. It's looking for those general descriptors, like I mentioned. Upper body, lower body clothing color. It's trying to match an image that matches the description. Uh, facial recognition for our system is an extra analytic. You can only, you have to license it for it to work. So it's not that we're going out to the internet, doing what Amazon does, or Clear AI, or whatever. Uh, it's com something completely different. It's a user-defined database. So it's not turned on at this point, uh, just so you guys can understand that it's not uh, 
not something you need to worry about in the system. So you said that the front doors are going to have the ability to have that kind of facial recognition, right? Yeah, the equipment that's been installed okay. has the capacity to do it. Yeah. So us building a watch list, or y'all building a watch list, necessarily won't like warn us if they come to the front door. We'll just see them through our camera. Exactly. Okay. It'd, be, it'd still be up to uh, the front desk to make that visual gotcha. recognition. Cool. Excellent. All right, so um, let's see. We did appearance search, we did classified object, and I went through these really fast, so uh, would it make sense to do a run through them again, maybe? Um, you can. You know, so we've got, just, we've got a hard stop at 9.30, just so everybody knows they're in here from 9.30 to 11.30, so we've got about... 15 minutes, but Kyle, I think maybe a little bit of Q&A would be good. And one of the things I wanted you to show was the analytics. Of, like we looked at range view and the fence, you know, where somebody's coming one way. Oh, yeah. can, you, can you illustrate that? Yeah, is that something? Is that something that matters, do you think? Yeah, uh, no, it speaks directly to what we're trying to do, right? So we're going to build a rule and an alarm for an analytic event, right? right? So this is kind of like understanding what this camera can do in this type of, in your, in your environment. So I'm going to program that event uh, where, like Jeff entered the park, uh, where somebody walks through the scene from that doorway to that table, uh, and then we want to find out about it, focus of attention. So what I'm going to do is rely on the video analytics to basically classify that object, cross the beam, and then notify us through focus of attention that that's happened. So to start with, I need to have uh, administrator rights, and I need to have access to the camera. So I'm pulling this camera over, I'm gonna double click on it, and right here, I can go, I'm just left or right clicking, going to device setup, and now I have all those things available. I can change the, you know, I can autofocus this, change the settings, uh, but what I'm going to do is go to analytic events, and I'm gonna program something in the, in the camera here, and um, I'm gonna delete this one, delete that one, that one I like, All right, so I'm gonna add a new one. And here, I have the, a couple different objects. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger so we can all see. So here, I need to start with a title. And uh, we'll just call it Line Cross, uh, Never Summer, right? My analytic event is enabled at this point, so I'm building it live. And I have a couple different things I can choose, choose from here. Objects and area, this basically means as soon as you know this object gets classified, uh, you'll see the blue box pop around me. That's that classified object detection. So essentially, as soon as that somebody comes into that box, and I could say that you know maybe it's just you know this side, that object's an area. I can look for a person or a vehicle. Uh, hopefully, there's no vehicles down here. And I could say the number of objects. I could say you know one will trigger this. Maybe it takes two to trigger this, right? Maybe. It, for loitering, if two people are hanging out, I want to know about it. Um, and then I can click OK. That's going to save that in the sum, in the uh, end of the camera. I can go back and edit this one. We'll keep working on it here. Instead, I want to use that objects crossing beam. This gives me this uh, basically uh, some arrows, so that if I'm going from what is that uh, right to left, uh, I can basically make sure that classified object crosses it, I can tell somebody about it. This is kind of that, that I'm making the trigger uh, for this rule. So that's pretty good. I like that one. And let's add another one too. Let's uh, add um, oh, going west. And uh, we'll say that this one is object loitering. So here, if I have something that you know, just sits in an area for too long, now I can find out about it, right? So if I put this, uh, you know, by the bleachers or, you know, by the garage or something, by the garage door, and I say that, you know, after 30 seconds reset that, um, you know, I can say uh, for people, fine, and uh, there we go. Change the name a little bit.
so now I've got this built into the camera where you know I've got the trigger, right? Now I need to go build the rule around it. So now I'm going to go up to the server, and um, this is the when we start here on the camera tree, we uh, go server or site, server, cameras, and then um, you know your views and maps and all those things. So I'm going to the site, and I need to add, create a rule. So I'm adding a new rule, and this is basically a wizard. This basically can, uh, system can tell Jeff that you know one camera's down or an IP packet got missed to uh, just about anything available in the system. But what we're looking for is a video analytic event started. And so I'm building this if and then do statement with these uh, sentences here, and basically it gives me the option here that when any video analytics event, I'm just clicking on the blue, and then there's my analytics I just set up, that line cross never summer. So I need to add that to my rule. So now when line cross never summer started on any camera, and I wanna make sure that I'm kind of helping the system out by picking the camera, uh, that helps narrow down the search. That's great, so that, that's my trigger part of it. That's the if, and then I can say do. So now I wanna add this to the focus of attention. I can play a sound, uh, and we have a bunch of different sounds. So if we choose an alarm, just to like, look out, I don't have the sound on, that's why Jeff, that, why the intercom didn't sound like it was playing before. Sure. Um, but it, you know, the alarms are really annoying, the bells are less annoying. So uh, we'll click OK there. And so now I, let's read it again. So when line cross never summer started on this camera, show the device link to the event, and then on focus of attention, it's going to play that or bring in that uh, little bit of information, and it's going to play a sound for us. And so we'll click next. Now these other things are conditional, so like if you had a, a button that needed to be pressed for this event to happen, we'll skip that part, it doesn't apply here. And then I need to add that rule, and it was a line cross never summer. And then I can add a description. I can also add a schedule here uh, by clicking add. That allows me to basically say if it's after hours, it's a big deal, right? If it's big during the school day, not a big deal because people normally do that. So after hours, I'm looking for that event, and then I'm gonna click finish and close. So that means basically that in this focus of attention interface, uh, when that event uh, happens, that should pop up for me. So now I've got that, let's give it a test. All right, so let's see. Let's go to that focus of attention, make sure it worked. And there's my little doodah that uh, uh, you know came in uh, for that focus of attention with that you know video analytic event. Excellent. So on top of that, I can also do alarms. So I can uh, layer alarms and events together or rules together. So I can do all kinds of crazy stuff. I could basically say that. Somebody drove in my parking lot at two o'clock in the morning. I could play a pre-recorded message. Uh, I could also, on top of that, you know, tell somebody else about it and call the police. So, this system. What I really wanted you guys to take away from this part is not so much how to program this because you can go back to the help menu and figure that out. But it's about what happens underneath the camera, right? What do you guys look for as anomalies that you want to be notified about, right? So that you can be in a proactive position. That's where the video analytics are really going to help you out. Um, but anybody want to see another example of appearance search before I open it for questions? Let me just go to questions. I, okay. yeah, and I, one of the things that I wanted to talk about. So the analytic events um, are are a big deal for me. You know, when I think about it again, as I as I think about our schools and, and this attention now to safety and security that we're doing. You know, Craig's got a pretty pretty big plate, you know, I mean, as far as going around to every school and recognizing, especially with our retrofits of, of each school having its unique uh, issues and things that we need to accommodate. The analytic event for me, I thought was just a really cool thing because now this gives us an ability, I use Rangeview as an example, but Elizabeth, you know, for Windsor Middle School, you know, we talk about open campuses and we wanna, we wanna be alerted. I can't necessarily get something out there. We can't cover it the way that maybe would be ideal. 
But if we set up an analytic event, what we're able to do is use the camera, you know, leverage that to secure an area or to send us an alert or to do something where, where before we've just been blind to it. So, you know, these are things that we're going to get a, get a chance to do. Um, yeah, there, there's a lot of options with it. So it's, it's, all, it's, it's a little overwhelming when you think about all the things that we can do. But the reality of it is I think it's, it's going to be great for us. So as, as, we, as we understand the system, as you understand your unique campus, you know, do, do you want to be notified? You know, I, again, Rangeview is my example with the community that's right there. If I have somebody jumping the fence to be able to use those arrows and say, okay, I want to know if anybody comes from this to this, I can actually highlight the analytic at the top of the fence line. And so now what we've done is we've said, okay, if somebody does, you know, climb this fence or comes over into there, we're going to send them along. Yeah, it's just an example that I've got, but the reality of it is, is we can apply that now to each of your locations in a way that makes sense. You know, and so maybe it's, it doesn't answer everything and we're not, we're not as secure as we want to be. We're working that way, but at least now we're able to do something, you know, and get visibility to it. So Jeff, with those rules, since there's a limited access to administrators to set up those rules, right. are we just going to need to communicate with you or with the, the staff to get that done? Uh, at this, at this I, point, I know you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I do. I do. It's, I, I think for us right now, that's how we're going to start. Okay. is you know let's put that ticket in and let's go and so i want you as you guys leave here to be thinking about what can we do um you know we've got resources to help us kind of set some of this stuff up um you know kyle and his team with the vigilant are available to me as well so being able to do all of that i'd love to be able to put as much in as we can um, but then yes it's, it's going to be me programming it until we have that confidence to say and craig to say yeah let's give this to the schools you know we we understand it enough we can tr uh, train this because I don't want to give that to you and then not be able to support you. Right. And, and that's where I'm at today. I give that to you and you'd ask a question. I'd be like, let me get cut because I don't remember. You know, again, just me learning the system. So that's probably our delay. Once we once we fix that, I, I don't know why we wouldn't give you guys the tools yeah. because you see your, your individual campuses. So I want to equip you to, to do what you need to do. So we'll probably just set up a general rule per campus just until we can I, yeah. identify it. I think that makes the most sense. Okay. Yeah. Don't. Yeah. For accessibility, mm -hmm. on our old camera systems, you had to be on the district's Wi Fi right. to access the cameras. Is that going to be the same? Yeah. At this, at this point, you know, being on network will, will, will be uh, required. So, okay. um, yeah, we haven't really talked much about access outside of, of the district. Um, that's a conversation we can have with Craig. If, that, if that's something that you guys need, we'll, we'll, we can look at what does that take. Yeah, I guess I was just thinking more in those critical incidents where we need to get information out, having access mm -hmm. quicker than, like you're saying. Sure. So, yeah. Okay. Cool. Yep. So, Kyle, you've got about five minutes here for a little bit of Q&A and stuff like that. Sorry to, yeah. uh, you know, limit limit that amount of time, but hopefully, hopefully there's not a ton. But want to make sure we get it all answered, too. Yes. Okay, so can we name the cameras <laughs> something other than HBOC 1975? <laughs> <laughs> I want that to be nuts. That's it. Yes. <laughs> no, that's it. I love that name. That's, 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 that's a great job. <laughs> I will say, last year I submitted a ticket and I said, I need this West Mod. Yeah. He's facing yes. Lala, mm -hmm. and he did a great job with it. Okay. So okay. I don't know if the system is. Yes. that going to lay on you to rename that, or are we able to click and name that? <laughs> yeah. You're picking up a trend? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, what, can, or what are we able to take off of your own? No, and I, I really, I, again, with this installation that we've got going on, you know, with a Vigilant and Radio Resource, you know, we've got people that are here. And as we work through phase two, I think as we put things up, I would love to know what, what should we call this? Because we're yeah. we're going to position it and we're going to name it something that we can pick up on. But for uh, for me to get a ticket, again, I'm going to be able to leverage the resources that we've got and our contractors to come in and they'll pop in there and we can rename it. So with me, I'll be able to work with them to do that. So yeah, as we, and especially with these elementaries, as we put the new cameras up, you know, what do you want to call them? You know, it's not been something you've had before, and so we want to make sure that it, it's something because it doesn't matter if it makes sense to me. You know, it needs to make sense to you. So you know, you could call it what you call it, HBOC nineteen oh five. You could you could do that. But, but when you when you submit that to me, yes, we'll, we 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 can turn that around and rename that camera. So if our 
our old cameras have already been named. Is it still that name? Uh, new system or no? We should have pulled it over so as, as that same name. Um, you know, and again, we can change that name. And as we swap out those older cameras again, you know, I want, I want those to be gone. But we're giving ourselves to the end of the calendar year just because there's so much. Um, so we'll get there. But yeah, if, if there's a better name for it, too. Let us know that. You know, if it got named something, it's the same as it was because we wanted to import it as such. But if you said, hey, let's let's change the name, that doesn't make a lot of sense, just let me know. Anything else for Kyle? Okay, thank you guys for coming again. For me, I will be at every location starting Wednesday afternoon for a couple hours. You know, as you guys are there and you think about things, please, you know, create that list, maybe that Google Sheet that we can share. Uh, I can look at those things that are relevant to you. Um, I was just saying to Elizabeth, email is, is, is my worst right now because it, I'm pages behind. Uh, if you submit a ticket or keep that running sheet that we're sharing when I'm there talking to you, we'll be able to kind of tackle those things together. That'll be the best way for me. Um, if it's something that can wait, an email is fine. Uh, it's just uh, my, my response time is a little delayed right now because of how much I've got. So that is it. Thank you all so much for coming. Really appreciate it. Thank you.